Hello everyone. Welcome to our very first session of deep learning. In this specific session, we will be talking about in a lot more detail what is deep learning and why it is really important to understand the concepts of deep learning in today's era. Before we will deep diving into it, it's very important to introduce uh, you know myself as a mentor to you guys. So my name is Priya and I will be teaching all over the concepts with respect to deep learning and NLP in this specific course. We will start discussing about the mathematical intuition behind every algorithm followed by the code implementation for the same. And definitely in every aspect of the topic, we will discuss that why it is important first of all to understand that stuff. Uh, what is the beauty about that algorithm and what is the disadvantage of that, right? For every specific algorithm, we have some pros and cons. We will try to discuss each and everything. And definitely whenever algorithms comes into picture, mathematical things also plays a very important role to understand the internals behind that. Uh, to cut the long story short, majorly we need to talk about each and everything in terms of industry perspective, whatever is Im important for you all to know, whether it's a talk about artificial neural network, convolutional neural ne network, a recurrent neural network, and many more. So we will, I will try to, you know, showcase you each and every concept in such a way that you will be easily able to understand the core idea behind every algorithm. That's the whole objective. Uh, coming back to my experience, so I almost have, you can say, four years of experience in this specific domain. I have completed my master's in AI from IIT Hyderabad. And there also I have, you know, done a lot of research in this deep learning specific part. My complete research, uh, if you can check my profile, is based on AI and healthcare domain, uh, where I have published the research paper also with respect to whatever research I have done at EMBC conference. So this is a bit about me. And now I think we can start this topic of what is deep learning. And let's try to understand in a lot more detail uh, with respect to why it is important to have a core idea about this specific subject. With this, let's get started. So whenever we are talking about this deep learning, right, it's very important, first of all, to understand the difference between AI, ML, and DL. I have seen so many people, they are interchangeably using these words, considering that all are same. But that's not the fact. You must have seen in the organizations also that there is a separate, separate positions for machine learning engineer, AI researcher, right? Computer vision engineer, and so on. So, what is the meaning of deep learning and where it comes into picture? Let's try to understand that part in the very first part of the video. So here you can see in this specific diagram, AI is something which you can say is a broader picture, right? So any technique that enables computers to mimic the human behavior. This is what we call as artificial intelligence. Uh, you must have seen the robots uh, in India, it's quite less, but if you will go outside India, at least I have seen in a lot of uh, YouTube videos that outside India, when you go to any cafe, there are robots available who are taking the orders in instead of, you know, waiters, right? Uh, so this is a kind of a thing which you can say is a part of a artificial intelligence. So you have an end-to-end -end machine, which is quite intelligent, can take all the decisions just like any human being can take. It's just that uh, it is based on the data set which we are feeding into it and it's a machine, doesn't have any emotions. That's the major difference, right? So this is what we have is artificial intelligence, which is, uh, you can say, broad level picture. Inside this AI, we have something called as machine learning. So what is machine learning? Machine learning is the ability to learn without explicitly being programmed. What is the meaning of that? Simply what, let's say you are dealing with one problem where you want to predict the price of a house in let's say 2025. So if let's say I will purchase a property in Bangalore and in 2024, the price of that property is maybe 2CR. I want to predict that in 2025, how much is the price of that? So what is the net interest Altogether, I will be able to take away from that specific purchase, right? So all of these things, wherever you will see that there is a historical data, which we have, and on the basis of that, 
I want to make the future predictions. That is where ML will come into picture. So, ability to learn without explicitly being programmed. I'm not writing any program for the same. It's being that my model is being trained on that historical data. And now because of that, my model is giving me the results for the future predict uh, predictions, right? We are learning from that. Now inside this, there is a subdomain called as deep learning, which is this specific course is all about, right? So in this deep learning, what we are doing is we are trying to extract the patterns from data using the neural networks. So researchers have observed that how our brain usually works, right? So in our brain, we have neurons with the help of which we will be able to, you know, function well. We, we will be able to decide that what thing fits good for us, what thing is bad for us. We will be able to make decisions in our life. So same thing, mimicking the similar kind of human behavior, uh, I would say brain behavior, is what this neural network does. That is why the name is also coming into picture. And this specific domain is something which we call as deep learning, right? So this is the overall idea. So one thing which we will be able to understand from this talk is that AI is the broader category. Inside AI, we have something called as ML. And inside this ML, we have something called as DL. So end-to-end -end program, uh, you can say like a robot, which will be able to take, take the decisions just like a human being can take, right? That much, that, 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 that much intelligence is there. That's what AI is something which will come into picture. Historical data on the basis of which we can predict the future predictions, ML. Uh, brain, which is like human mimicking brain, neurons are there, neural networks are there, deep learning. So this is the major difference between these three domains that we have. I hope it is clear to everyone. Now, if we have ML, why there is a need of DL, right? There, there must be a question in many people's head that Priya, if we have machine learning domain, then why researchers have come to neural network? I will talk about that within a few seconds. Uh, but before going towards that part, when we talk about this ML, right, you will observe that we will be dealing with the numerical data. We will be dealing with the numerical data. So the historical data which I am talking about in this specific domain, that historical data is the numerical data, right? For example, just few minutes back, I have talked about the example of a house price prediction, right? When we talk about DL, you will observe that maximum number of time in this specific domain, we are dealing with the image-based data. For example, you have a problem of you are dealing with the problem of face detection, right? Nowadays, though, in our smartphones, we have a password via which fingerprint or via face, my, my automatically mobile phone will get unlocked, right? So all of these uh, things, internally, if you will ask me which specific technique is going on, it's nothing but deep learning. So what I'm trying to convey over here that with the help of a data set also, you will be able to determine that whether we should go with the ML specific technique or DL specific technique. Now, why is that so? Can't images be handled by ML algorithms that we have? So here is my answer. Initially, when we will be dealing with, or researchers will be dealing with machine learning based algorithms, what they have recognized, that when we will be having a simpler data set, right, as we are increasing the data, and let's say on the y-axis, we will be having the performance of the model. They have observed with their experiments that as soon as we're increasing the data, the performance is increasing in the machine learning models. But after some point of time, that performance becomes stagnant. There is not any sharp increase which they have observed in terms of performance. And that is where so this is a talk about ML algorithms. So this is the observation which they will be able to form. Means as soon as we are increasing the data, my ML algorithms won't be able to handle or you can say recognize the complex patterns. So ML algorithm starts failing in that kind of a scenario. But when we're talking about deep learning algorithms, they are 
giving an amazing performance means their performance is linearly available and increasing it so whenever we are dealing with the dl based algorithms or you can say the neural networks and that is why when we are talking about images right images are of complex data whereas when we talk about numerical data points right whenever we are talking about numerical data points these are quite simple so when we are dealing with simpler data it's quite uh, obvious that you will observe those companies are you know dealing with ml algorithms till today as well and when we are dealing with images most of the time because images are of complex data points they are dealing with a dl or deep learning based algorithms in all the banking domains because the data set belongs to numeric data right still today ml algorithms are the ones which are going for training part per se maybe they are applying in that ensemble techniques a lot but you can understand that still it's a very simpler data as comparable to image specific data points when we are talking about dl right deep learning you will observe in a healthcare domain right let's say we have a problem where we have the images of ct scans images of ct scans of the patients they are not using ml algorithms and even if they are using the performance is not that much up at the end of the day they have to move to deep learning algorithms right so in almost all the image based data whether it's a part of a healthcare domain or any other domain you will observe that deep learning is something which currently people are using right deep learning architectures they are using maybe they are starting from with uh, you know machine learning they reach to some performance level got some accuracy and afterwards they are they are jumping towards deep learning stuff and utilizing the i would say powerful architectures to get the results done so that is the real motivation with which uh, we should learn deep learning because after some point of time maybe ml algorithms can fail and that is where the more powerful algorithms of deep learning comes into picture that's the whole idea but again these deep learning algorithms running part right comes with cost so it incurs a lot of cost incurs a lot of cost majorly in gpus so you will observe that wherever people are using these heavy data set with respect to uh, i would say training the model it requires a lot of heavy gpus and obviously it's it's quite costly right that is why companies are uh, you can say currently you know doing a lot of expenditure in terms of this deep learning based specific trainings right so that is the whole idea about this deep learning and why it is really important to study this specific domain uh i really hope that this specific video will give you an idea specifically what is deep learning in the next upcoming video i will talk about the history of deep learning that is this domain is quite new or is that something which we already had but it's just that it is booming now so in the upcoming video i will talk about that specific stuff but in the meanwhile you can just think about it and let me know that what do you think is this deep learning domain comes very recent because the boom we can see uh like in 2000s right many people after i would say 2020 lot of companies startups uh getting funded with respect to ai specific domain right so it is booming right now but what do you think is this quite new or not what is your answer you can let me know i will discuss the same thing in the upcoming video with this bye bye everyone and i will see you all in the upcoming videos